morning and welcome to Utopia Farms. Let's step inside and see what today has in store for us. I thought I'd show you my fancy way of feeding the lamb. Come here. We don't have a bottle feeder in here right now. They're all in the coveralls. So this way I can feed all three at once. Pretty quick. Cheaper than a milk machine. <laughs> but uh, on the topic of milk machines, we, um, we are going to look into getting one. And uh, I haven't researched them yet, but I'm, I'm hoping this week I can get one ordered and we'll have it out for the rest of these lambs or maybe the fall lambs we'll see three done me and Max are holding back the ewes while Arnie brings in a bale of straw, no, bale of hay, sorry, for feeding uh, our fall breeding group. Go on, don't even think about it. Good boy, Max. He loves to work. He's not trained, but he sure loves to work. Stay there. Stay there. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Giselle, you're so pretty. You're so pretty with that hairdo. No. Max, come on. Giselle, show your do. Show that fancy do. How's that for a pretty door set? Hi. No wool on your face. Hi, General. How you doing? There's two of the rams we'll be using in the breeding group shortly. That's Fargo up front and Gaston in the back. That other white one there is uh, Hamish that we purchased for a lot of money. And you see how much wool he's grown in on his face? People are saying that's acceptable, but it's not something we want to breed for. We prefer these bare faces on the dorsets. And as much as people say it's acceptable, if you read the breed standard, it says uh, that they should have bare face. Woolly cheeks, bare face. And here comes Ferdinand. Ferdy! Ferdinand! Or else he will also be in uh, the fall breeding group. Hey Ferdinand, you're so handsome. He is so, so pretty. But he has to go on big U's because uh, he's a big boy. Usually we give uh, U's sired by Ferdinand that we've kept back to uh, Fargo here for the next breeding, because Fargo is a shorter, stockier ram. And the pairing between those, the tall guy and the shorter, stockier guy, uh, makes a really nice uh, lamb. And as the bale diminishes, you can see that Ben and Max just have to be involved in the whole process. I guess we're done. We, st we still have to keep a close eye on them, though, because every now and then they want to nip one of the ewes at the feeder. Hey, 
Hey Scotty. How you doing? Hi Scotty. Hi. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? So the current method we're using with bottle babies is uh, mix a bottle, put it in the holder, and walk away. These guys are getting fed three times a day and very shortly are going to be going down to twice. But the bad part about that is that they have fixed meals. Whereas in, uh, in real life, um, if they were with their moms, they would be sipping all throughout the day, which they can't do with this. So um, that is where a milk machine has its benefits because uh, they get to sip whenever they feel like it all through the day. But you have to be set up for it. You have to have running water, hydro, and usually a place to put the lambs. So it does require some infra infrastructure. So every now and then, the salt mineral feeders We'll get uh, plugged up, and it's from the moisture getting into them, from them licking, or from it dripping off the ceiling or whatever. So that's why we always have a rod there to tamp it down each day, but even then it can still build up. So when that happens, we just uh, chisel it out with a hammer and clean it out, and then refill it with fresh stuff. kind of confusing when you see the mineral coming out of the blue scoop and the blue salt coming out of the red scoop. That's just to trick people. This is the friendly pen for some reason. We don't do anything in this pen, but I think it's because they're all boys. I thought I'd try to show some ram behavior here, but they're really close to me. So this guy, he's a ram, and he's really friendly, never puts his head to me, likes to be cuddled, stands still, really nice. But if you look right beside him, this guy here, see, he, see how he's bending his head towards me? I'll stand up and maybe you can see it better. And now he's uh, humping the other guy. And he's up here. This is the friendly one. Now when I'm standing, you see, I've become bigger. Less likely for him to dominate me. But when I go down, He nudged, see, he nudged my camera. Hey, buddy. He's not doing it so much now, of course. But this guy, he's putting his head towards me. There, here we go. That is a, a ram who's going to be trouble in the future if you don't put a lid on that. So, whereas the friendly guy stands here and lets me pet him, see he just came and he hit my leg. He's wanting attention. He's not trying to attack me, but he's uh, trying to say, I'm top ram here, come and pet me. And if I don't pet him, he's hitting me. Whereas the other guy is standing here quietly. So basically this guy, you're not going to reinforce his behavior by actually petting him. You're going to either A, ignore him, or B, push him away, and he'll walk away. And when he comes back to be pet and he doesn't put his head down or, or push at you and demand attention, then pet him. And usually they'll learn that, uh, that uh, good behavior gets rewarded and bad behavior does not.
basic behavioral psychology. Oh. And on our way out, I see Pebbles nursing her lambs. So we have to stop and look at them since she has the most remarkable lambs. Those are so nice and I know I keep saying that and I probably won't sell them. But uh, they are such such nice ewe lambs. I'm glad Pebbles had uh, ewe lambs. See, and Pebbles is the one with the story where uh, I kept pushing her to the back of the pen when uh, we were sending ewes to market too because uh, we weren't as well known in those days. And uh, finally the last load went and uh, she missed the truck and she got to stay but because I always wanted her to stay. So, and she's gone on to produce really well for us so it was really good decision. Luckily nowadays, pretty well all our ewes have homes uh, even a year, year in advance. Some pre-booking sales. Hi, you're very pretty. There we go. I found them both. The two 44s are eating side by side at the trough. Hey 44s, how you guys doing? Are you a little too busy to look at the camera? Hey, how you doing? Hey, would you like to have a look? Are you getting a little bit of wool on you? This one, this one's got a little bit more wool on his face. But not too much, only a little patch there. Just a tiny patch that we can just grab with our hands. His brother has none. Hi guys. Are you a bit snoggy with your nose in the dust? Anyway, they're still friendly. They're just busy. Pretty soon we'll let them out and we'll get good looks at all these guys. And there's going to be a dog and pony show shortly when we try to take uh, the Dorsets out of this group because they have to go in that uh, group in the main barn for breeding. And when you move a whole big group of sheep, it's really easy because when one moves, they all go and there's comfort in a big flock. That's why they're flock animals. But I think there's like six or seven that we have to pull out of here. And that's a small flock. And uh, they don't want that. So um, it's going to be a lot harder. And what we're going to have to be most concerned about is that nobody jumps the gate when we're trying to round them up and head into the ram pen. Then it'll be a really dog and pony show. Or you and Ram show, as the case may be. Oh, you guys are so nice. On to the next barn. And before we get to the next barn, I see you saw that the two 44s were together. Well, these are the two um, Dorset Cross girls that we kept. And they're sisters. And they will be going over to the barn for breeding to a Dorset Ram with the Dorset group. Um, but they're together too. If you have siblings, they do tend to hang together. Of course, she just walked off. But you saw, they were originally together. These ones are so pretty. You are, you're very pretty. There's Karen. She's weaned now, so she's uh, thinking when she sees me that it's time for a bottle but she's weaned and someone mentioned that they hadn't seen Hunchy and wanted to see Hunchy. Well Hunchy is one of the friendliest of the Suffolk ewes we have and I'm about to come in this cover all where she is and she's weaned now too and that's her right here. Hi Hunchy! Hi Hunchy! 
Danny. Hi, how you doing? Hi. Hi. You're extremely nice. Yes, you are. You're always the nice one in the group. You are. You are. Her and her sister are extremely friendly, yes. And she has not the slightest sign of a hunch at all. She's actually an extremely well-built you. She's nice and square, good on her feet, good temperament, good eater. Here comes breakfast. Always when you're placing the bale in the feeder, you do have to watch the heads. Like, they'll stick their heads in, and you'd think they'd pull it back, but they get so used to you and, the, and so used to the process that they begin to lose fear of it, and uh, you can trap um, a sheep's head. We've only done it once, um, and I. But I know um, people with round bale feeders. Uh, it happens to them a lot. Oh, this is a nice little boy too. As I'm looking at the lambs here sticking their head in for the hay, I see one ram here with skurs. And uh, Suffolk's are a pole breed, meaning that horns have been bred out of them. Although in their uh, background there are horns, but we're talking a breed that's several hundred years old now. But occasionally uh, it does pop up again. Rarely with actual horns, but sometimes you'll get skurs. And I'm seeing on this little guy, see those two little things that look like a mini, mini devil horns? Uh, those are skurs. And when I touch a skur, if you'll let me, it's actually quite, oh, he's going to run off. It's actually um, kind of wobbly when you touch it. Uh, it's not firm like a bone, like a real horn would be. Uh, you can wobble it around. So what generally happens with skurs, where did he go? Which is the skur boy? It's this guy here. So generally what will happen, boys being boys, they'll be butting each other or butting things and he will knock those skurs off. It'll bleed a little bit, um, but uh, they'll pop off and generally they don't come back. These are the babies. And on the other, Ben, Ben, get out of there. On the other side, you can see the faces on the other side. Everybody's learned. Oh, and there's little Annie. Okay. She was just uh, bad over there. She's in the Dorset group. But that's Annie. And Crookie shouldn't be far because, again, with that sibling thing, um, Crookie and Annie think they're brother and si well, Actually, they're both girls. They think they're sisters and are usually close together. I think Crookie just actually went around the corner of the feeder over there. But you see Annie saw me and she went over to the bottle feeder. She thinks I'm going to feed her a bottle. But that pen is me. Ah, but there she goes off running. She's fine. And I got someone jumping on me. Okay, buddy. Now your foot's stuck in my pocket.
pretty soon we'll be pulling these U's out and drying them up. Some of these big guys like this guy are having a little hard time squishing through the creep area now. And we do want them to come and eat their creep feed. Now they can eat with their moms, so it's not like a big issue. But um, when we have a whole bunch that are getting like that, um, then we'll pull the ewes off and they'll go into another barn to dry off. And this group of lambs will have free reign of this barn. The ewes will dry off in the next coverall and then be uh, let out to pasture until they get bred again in the fall. We'll see if that guy can push through. <laughs> That's why you put the rollers on them. It helps them slide through as they get bigger without uh, getting stuck. Because they can get stuck in those bars if you don't have rollers on them. There's the freshly weaned bottle babies. And there's Crookie and, <coughs> Crookie and Annie together. And Kevin and Karen. They're not too happy with me right now because I'm not giving them a bottle anymore. But they're eating hay and creep feed, drinking water. They're fine. But Crookie doesn't have crooked legs anymore either. See? See your nice legs? There. I, don't know. I think you can see there's no, no knobs or swelling or crookedness at all. There. See that? And she can climb up things. All better. Let's we'll see if we can give Hunchy a hug. There we go. Hunchy. Group hug with everybody. Everybody on YouTube can give you a group hug. You're such a nice girl. You're such a nice girl, aren't ya? There you are. You're so nice. In the kitchen making lunch. For the light here. And this guy flew into the kitchen. Of course, we have no windows open. Is he in focus? No, yeah, not now. And uh, it's a starling. See? This fine. guy, he must have flown down the chimney. So we're going to release him. You'd think a starling would be bigger than that, but this is a starling. He's fine. Luckily, the cats didn't find him. And we're going to let him go. <laughs> so we just moved the uh, first timers that are going to be bred over to the main barn. And uh, a couple of calls in the group as well. Come on. Turn around. That's it. Well, of course, everybody's come to see them, so they're blocking. And uh, normally that would have been difficult because they were all first-timers, but we had an old girl in the group, and the old girls know the routine, and she led them back uh, no problem. So they're ready for the shearer. So I think that's it for today. I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.